Welcome to our walkthrough of a new company setup with Spire Systems Business Management Software. This video continues a series on the setup of enterprise resource planning for a fictional company called Cold North Canola Oil, which produces virgin canola oil and canola meal out of canola seeds sourced from northern Saskatchewan, Canada. First, we'll configure the building blocks for our new inventory codes, which are uh, general ledger accounts, sales departments, product codes, vendors, and warehouses. Here we're logged into our company that we were logged into in the last video, continuing from where we left off with our initial company setup. We'll start today with adding new ledger accounts to use for more detailed sales analysis, among other things. Um, and we're going to make three sales accounts and three inventory accounts. So Spire gives us a basic template of accounts to begin with. And we can see we've already got three sales accounts here. So we're going to change sales one to retail sales. Sales two to reseller. And sales three. And then for our inventory codes, or accounts, pardon me, right now we can see it gives us one general inventory account. So we're going to change our 11300 account to inventory oil. And then we're going to make a couple new inventory accounts. 11305 for inventory seed. And we'll keep that in the inventory subgroup assets as well as 11.310 for inventory bottling. Okay, so we've got our three new inventory accounts and our three new sales accounts. Now we can create our sales departments. So we'll go into our company settings sales departments and our first one will be sales retail cost of goods and our inventory oil and then we'll do one for each type of sales account with the same inventory different inventory accounts which are all related to bulk so we'll do that for sales bulk uh, we've already got that one so we just need 305 and 310 okay so that should be all the sales departments we need for now now we can create our product codes. So we're going to go into our product codes and create our modeling code, which has no margin, but does have a sales department now. Okay, so now we have all of our product code set up that we want. So now we are going to set up our inventory warehouses. Uh, so we come in here and we've got our initial default warehouse. And I can see right away on the window that we're grayed out here for the plus sign. So I can't create any new warehouses, which tells me that my either my uh, user settings are wrong 
or we need to turn company warehouses on. So first we'll check our company settings inventory. Yeah, we need to turn on multiple warehouses. Okay. So now we have our plus sign, there we go. So with our default warehouse, we're gonna change the name of that to our retail warehouse. And our next warehouse will be our reseller warehouse. Okay, so now we have our three warehouses set up that we're going to use to split up our inventory. We could keep all of our inventory in one warehouse. We won't have that many codes for this example. But we want to demonstrate how different warehouses can be used to separate and keep track of different um, stats on your inventory easily. For example, we're going to put all of our bottling supplies inside the reseller warehouse so it'll be easy to tell how much value we have at any one time in our, in our bottling supplies and, and shipping supplies. Okay, so next we are going to create some vendors to buy from. We'll just make a couple. We'll do Alibaba as an example of a distributor we'll buy bottling supplies from and you can see here we can fill out all kinds of information including tax information um, for this example we'll leave all that blank so we don't need it as well we'll do our canola supplier okay so now that we have a couple of vendors we can create our codes we're going to start with our bulk warehouse codes. Uh, so you can tell right now my user is set to default to 00, zero warehouse. So we'll need to switch to the bulk. And the first code we'll make is our canola. Oops. And that is our canola seed in bulk. And this inventory type is going to be our raw material. And our product code for our raw is under bulk. You can see automatically it updates our sales department for the default with that product code. But we want to change this one to bulk seed and track it in that department. You can see here we're set up to do price per each, but we're going to track our canola by kilogram. And we're going to set that our default for buying and selling. And now you can see it's updated price per kilogram. gonna sell that typically but if we did we would probably sell it for at least as much as we we're gonna pay for it which is about 48 cents a kilogram uh, typically we buy it in 34,000 kilograms or truckload and our primary vendor is the one we just made and you can see I can partially type that in and it pops up right away our reorder point we're going to say is when we get below 20,000 kilograms. And the order quantity 34. Okay. So there's all kinds of options in here where we can specify taxes, tax rebates, which is handy when you're selling online, uh, price matrix, changing prices based on different customers and volume as well as images for web stores okay 
So that is our first code. We're not going to copy that to any of the warehouse. And we'll make our next one. So as you can see here, we finished creating our inventory codes. We're ready to uh, show some processes now with our codes. Before we do that, we're going to make some filters for our inventory. Obviously with only uh, 10 codes here, we're, we're probably not too worried about filters, but it's good to show how when you have more inventory or lots of transactions, the filtering really comes in handy with this software. So on here, I can just add a filter. I can say uh, when that filter, when the warehouse is equal to retail. I only want to see my retail codes. I'm going to save that as retail. And I can make it just for my user or for the entire company, for everybody when they log in. Now that I've made that, I'm going to add it to my module list. So now on the left hand side, I've got it underneath my inventory as a default if I want it. Now we're going to change this to reseller. I'm going to save this as well and add it to my list. And then bulk. So now you can see here it's easy for me when I come in if I want to see just a specific set of codes. You can just click on this and easily see and switch between the different types of codes that I've made. Uh, we're going to go back and look at our kits and our manufactured codes and fill those out. Uh, first, we're going to go to our manufactured good, which is our canola oil. We're coming to our components tab. Okay, so we know that uh, we need raw canola. And we need about 2.3 kilograms for one liter of canola oil. Now we also want to generate our canola meal when we press our canola oil. So what we're going to do there is add in our canola meal as well. But we're going to put it as a negative quantity. We get about 1.2 kilograms back after it's pressed. You can see we've got no cost on that, which is good. So when we roll up the cost for the item, it's not going to affect us. And then if we want, we can put manufacturing notes and instructions in. And that can be per line. So the instructions per line change, but the manufacturing notes don't. Okay, so that was our manufactured good. So as we go up here, these are all reseller. So meal, we already set up that for being made when we make our oil. Uh, and then our bottle. So this inventory item is a kitted inventory, which is different than manufactured because it's consisting of components that you can take back apart. <clears throat> and that aren't manufactured. Okay, so for this, we will need a bottle. And a label. And a lid. some canola oil. Okay, so we need one bottle, one lid, one label, and half a liter of canola oil. And that will make
make our Blue Label 500 ml virgin canola oil bottle. Okay. And then our box of 20, which is also a kit, is just our bottle with a box. So we need one box and 20 bottles. Our canola meal for a bag, which is also kitted, is canola meal, 20 kilograms, and a bag. I'm not seeing. So we're missing our bag for our canola meal. We've got the item but not the bag. So the nice thing about Spire is they've done a great job of linking the modules. So normally in a different program I would have to go back into the inventory module and create a separate uh, code for this or come back up here. But within the modules and within the menus they do a great job of linking to the other ones. So from within here I can create a new inventory code, which will be our bags. Alright, so now we've got our bags in this menu to pull from. One of those. And now our canola meal is ready to be sold and bought. Okay, so that ends our video on creating our inventory codes for. Uh, cold North Canola Oil. In our next video we will go through the sales and purchasing cycle and uh, the relevant accounting features that go along with that. Thanks for watching.